welcome back to another video and today I'm in the heart of North Wales with my good friend and fellow landscape photographer Henry Turner and we're off on a bit of a photography adventure to a new location that neither of us have been to before in search of some photos so hopefully it should be a cracking day and with spring around the corner I'm going to be sharing a few ideas on how I'm preparing my photography for the new season ahead and of course we'll be having a chat with Henry along the way as well so tons to get through in today's video I'm sure it's going to be a cracker and I think we're going to get some wet and windy weather along the way too so who knows what's going to happen so let's get stuck into it I don't think I was anticipating the rain to be quite this heavy, but wetter than Atlantic salmon, we pressed on through the storm, with our expedition turning into an unintentional aquatic adventure. Well, it is one of those filthy days up here in Snowdonia. Just constant rain, but it's been a beautiful walk so far. We've climbed up quite far. Got some pretty expansive views. There's some lovely old pines down there as well, which I may come back to later. Henry's just down there taking a photo of a spider's web covered in water droplets, which will be an interesting one, I'm sure. Ah, but yeah, I'm gonna head up here just a little bit further and see what's over this ridge line. So I was trying to think which is my favourite season, spring or autumn, and it's a tough call, isn't it? But when I think about it, I think it's actually spring. I absolutely love, you know, new growth, the vibrancy of spring, but I always feel like you get a little bit more time as well, because with autumn, you know, one good gust of wind and all that colour can be on the floor, can't it? Ooh. But um, yeah, with spring, you know, it can creep up on you, can't it? And uh, give you a little bit more time, which is always nice. And I always think as well, especially with woodland photography, you've got different areas of woodland that uh, come into leaf earlier than others. So for example, you've got birch, uh, poplar, alder. They tend to uh, come into leaf a little bit earlier. Horse chestnut, um, where the likes of, say, ash and oak, tend to get their leaves a little bit later on. So with a bit of forward planning, sometimes it can really help to know what, what type of species you have in which particular woodlands. Ah, there's some lovely old pines, which might be of interest actually. Right, yeah, this does look interesting. So I think I found my first shot and I've seen multiple compositions all facing that way, but shooting directly at the driving rain is virtually impossible. So I've got a stone wall here on my left-hand side, and that's helping to shield the rain just a little bit to make the whole process just a little bit easier. Every now and again, we get too much fog come over, so it's just about choosing the right moment. And uh, yeah, I want to get that separation there, but I don't want those pine trees to be, to be completely hidden by the rain and the fog. Uh, yeah, such uh, horrendous conditions, but absolutely brilliant. I love this type of photography. And you've got to kind of be as reactive as possible and just roll with the changing conditions. Settings wise, at the minute, I'm at 1 25th of a second, F11, ISO. 125 and the histogram's looking pretty nicely balanced and that fog is just clearing a little bit so i'm going to take this shot right now and hopefully it's half decent to start off What's your favourite, spring or autumn? Oh, autumn, definitely. But that's yeah. not to say I don't like spring. Um, I think it's yeah one of the best times of the year to shoot as well. Uh, yeah, I'd say I definitely prefer autumn, but it might be a little bit contentious. Yeah. Comment down below on the. I've favorite. gone for spring. Oh, have you? Why? Yeah, just because you get a little bit longer. 
I think sometimes, That's you know, fair. in autumn, if it like, if it yeah. one good gust of wind and the leaves are on yeah. the floor, whereas spring, you've just got a bit more time, haven't you? I'll tell you what I do like about spring as well, in fairness. Like, if you take yourself away from photography for a second, like, you've just been through the winter. Yeah. It's just nice, isn't it? When the landscape starts coming alive again, but yeah, the pros and cons, I suppose, aren't they? Oh, yeah, for sure. One of my favourite subjects to capture during spring is wildflowers, particularly those that create a blanket of colour. Species like bluebells, wild garlic and wood anemone can be spotted in woodlands even throughout winter, albeit in their nascent stages as small shoots. Recognising these plants in their early growth is crucial. I keep a constant watch for bluebell shoots starting from January, scouting for areas with abundant shoots and evenly spaced trees to ensure the woodland isn't overly dense. I use a couple of apps which show the sun's position at any given time throughout the year. These are the Photographer's Ephemeris, which is available as an app or for free as a desktop version, and Photopills, which is a paid-for app, but well worth the small one-time fee. Having an app in your pocket when scouting is incredibly valuable, especially for wild flower shots. Typically, I'm either looking for backlighting or side lighting to make those flowers pop and stand out. I've managed to find a composition that I think I'm quite happy with, and I think it's probably the first one of the day. And uh, yeah, we've got a grouping of trees. We come right up onto the top of the mountain here, looking down into the valley, and we've got this grouping of trees all twisted and gnarly. They bend over to the left-hand side of the frame. We've got a couple of vertical oaks on the left, and a smaller oak right down in the valley, and that gives the eye something to wander through too. And obviously that's accentuated with the depth that we have with this atmosphere and fog. So right at the foreground here, we've got this old stone wall. There's a bit of deadfall leaning against that too, which I think points down as well towards that smaller oak in the background. So yeah, quite a lot going on, but I think that fog adds to the separation and keeps things nice and simple. I'm getting absolutely soaked. So I'm gonna take this shot without too much uh, faffing around. And uh, yeah, focusing on the mid-ground, on the mossy boulders in the mid-ground. Tenth of a second, F10, I say 125. <laughs> ah, what a day, what a day. need to find Henry now. I'm not sure where he's going or he's gone, should I say, but we'll go and find him. While I look for Henry, please allow me to mention my landscape photography ebook all about how I compose my photos. The PDF book has over 120 pages and 200 photos that show my thought process from finding a composition to finally pressing the shutter button. I'm sure you'll find it a great read and it is the best way to help support my channel. If you do fancy checking it out, there is a link down there in the video description. All right. There he is, down in the valley there. So Henry, do you, what do you think about getting ready for spring? Do you have any tips or anything like that that, that you could maybe share? What, what do you, what yeah, inspires you? I'd say one thing that I'm really into is like maps, so like Ordnance Survey maps. Actually a quick tip, Bing, if you go on the Bing website, they've got a tab to go on Ordnance Survey maps here in the UK, which is a really good resource and it's free. But yeah, I like to scour OS maps in my local area and try and find deciduous woodlands for spring, heighten my chances of getting some nice color and perhaps bluebells. The thing with woodlands is it's very difficult to find a woodland without putting in the work. That's and exactly yeah, right, Unless you've got it? Yeah. like a friend that's, oh, like you might tell me a good woodland down by you. But other than that, you can't expect to go online and just, you know, no. nice woodlands near me. It's really tricky to find, so. You've just got to put the groundwork in and go exactly. and explore, really, haven't yeah. you? And, yeah. then, and then see see what happens. But I think it's a good idea to like visit these places before spring actually starts, um, just to say, give you an idea of what type of trees are in those areas yeah. as well. Because obviously like, you know, the birch and horse chestnut, they, they'll come into leaf a lot earlier than say yeah. an oak tree would. Absolutely. So it give yeah, you a bit yeah. of an idea of in terms of timing as well, doesn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice, nice, nice it is, tip, man. It's groundwork, you're right. Like, it is though, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. It's like, it's fun, it's not, it doesn't, you don't have to look at it as, you know, real hard work or anything. It's fun to go out scouting and 
especially when it's local, because you might find a little gem of a woodland that a photographer may have never even photographed. And I just love that thought. I find that so inspiring. There's something always, there's something always original to be had in a woodland, yeah, isn't it? Exactly. So, yeah. ah, good stuff, man. Yeah. Good stuff. Just look at this old oak tree. That <laughs> looks absolutely amazing. I'm just wondering if there's a, a shot here if I get down quite low with a wide angle lens and look straight up into the sky because it is quite diffused up there. Maybe that's a shot. Oh, I'm so glad I've got good waterproofs. <laughs> so I've set up here, I'm just waiting for the fog to come back. So the fog's dissipated somewhat, but I think it'll be back again very shortly. It's a lovely old tree here, which spills over this dry stone wall, mossy branches, absolutely wonderful, really nice. And uh, yeah, we've got this limb here, which stretches out from the left-hand side of the frame, taking the eye down through to the broken stone wall there, which is, yeah, pretty epic, but it definitely needs fog because it needs that diffusion as the branches stretch up into the sky. While waiting for the mist to return, I pondered how this composition could be improved. My initial thought was that with spring foliage present, the gaps between the branches would close in a little. Additionally, I imagined what it would look like during a misty evening with sunlight pouring through the branches. So I had a quick look on the photographer's ephemeris for the month of April, and it turns out the sun's position would be perfect between 3 and 5 p.m. So who knows, maybe on another visit, this might happen. I think today's adventure proves one thing. While the photos I captured might not make it to the portfolio, I feel I've gained a little more knowledge of the area and found a few places I would like to revisit. So it was great to get out with Henry today and I'll leave a link for his channel down in the description if you haven't already checked it out. Go and drop him a sub. He's such a top guy and his landscape photography is amazing. He's always got so much inspiration to share, such a positive attitude towards photography. Yeah, such a top bloke. So yeah, please do go and give him some love. If you enjoy this video, there's another one up here somewhere that you might like as well. And please do consider checking out my landscape photography ebook all about composition. The link for that is at the top there and also down in the description. Anyway, guys, take care and I'll see you all next week.